Assembled from over 2 million beads, this massive Huichol mural recounts the creation of the world in blazing colors. It can fill your entire field of vision, like a psychedelic IMAX screen. The principal artist was Santos Motoapoa de la Torre Santiago, and the full credit is in the description box. I visited the Museo Zacatecano in the historic heart of Zacatecas City, Mexico, and this uncut three-minute video will walk you through the largest museum collection of Huichol works I have ever seen. This first room previews the bead mosaics, stitched cloths, and yarn paintings that hallmark the art of the Huichol, who call themselves Huicharrica, or Huirarrica, meaning people. Descended from the nomadic Chichimex north of the Mesoamerican frontier, the Huichol have traditionally inhabited the Gran Nayar highlands shared by Nayarit, Zacatecas, and Jalisco. The highlight of this next room is a central chamber whose inner canopy plays a kaleidoscopic animation of the profound visions inspired by peyote cactus, one of the most sacred objects in Huichol religion. I will return to the space at the end of the video to present today's mask. It was a chilly day in January 2012, in a city one and a half miles above sea level, so today's museum date was quiet enough for this complete, uninterrupted tour of the Huichol Halls. The present space displays embroidered textiles and yarn paintings, largely decorated in elaborate symmetries. The white square cloths are stitched in meticulous designs of black, red, and green. And despite the dim interior, intense multicolor schemes remain quite apparent upon the yarn paintings mounted on these walls. Held in place with delicate beeswax, the yarn painting medium originated from illustrations of peyote visions and mythical episodes, but more recently they have included the contemporary Huichol world. In the following chamber appears a traditional view of the Huichol family, with ritual instruments such as the standing drum, gourd bowls, and the tsukuri wand famously known as Ojo de Dios. Many of these featured in the annual pilgrimage to the Widikuta Desert to collect peyote. In the display panels at back are more examples of ritual attire and stitched cloths. I now progress into a chamber showing replicas of shrines referencing points of orientation and mythical events within the Huichol cosmos. Indeed, the Tukipa ritual complex itself is built as a microcosm of Huichol geography. Beyond this is perhaps the museum's most famous yarn painting, El Caminanto Silencioso, The Calm Traveler, a masterpiece in the medium. More textiles appear in this foyer, as well as small stools and chairs for ceremonial events. The color schemes are especially dense among the cloths here. The space opens to the museum's upper gallery, with walkways to other exhibits such as colonial paintings and mining history. Concluding this museum walkthrough, I enter the final room in the Huichol wing of the Museo Zacatecano. Beside the entrance are a few last yarn paintings, whose mythical and spiritual meanings I explain in another video. We also find portraits of early anthropologists, who pioneered a knowledge of Huichol ritual and social life since the turn of the 20th century. Classic photographs from their travels adorn the wall's upper levels as windows into Huicharrica culture before modernization. I then marvel at the elaborate patterns upon these last textiles before I complete this tour with today's mask. Today's mask returns to the canopy from the course's second room, whose overhead ceiling played an animated peyote vision. Upon the flanking panels were miniatures of yarn paintings from the museum's collection, with a layer of lenticular prisms to give each image a holographic hint. Here is a miniature replica of a larger yarn painting depicting Takutsu Nakawe, our great-grandmother Growth, one of the primary ritual deities. She appears here seated within an altar bowl surrounded by ritual staffs. With the lenticular print, I understood the three-dimensional depth of the Huichol vision, and with the video above its four-dimensional transformations. I even reached into the panel's perceived space to realize the profundity and the insight beyond the illusion. Please like, share, and subscribe to the Eye of the Serpent channel. Your support goes toward travel, research, and production. Thank you for watching, and good roads.